My name is Daniel. I'm here at MIT at the Institute Archives and Special Collections, and here with me is Stephen Skews, the Rare Books Program Manager, and he has some interesting books about animals to show us today. The two books that we're looking at here today are by Conrad Gessner. He's a Swiss, uh, Swiss naturalist. He's actually a, 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 typically for a, an educated person of his time. He dabbled in a lot of different areas. He was a philologist. He worked with um, various sorts of, of natural history. But he was also uh, uh, interested in animals. And indeed, he's now called the father of zoology. Sorry. This is, this is volume one of a large, a very large set of five volumes. Uh, called the uh, Historiae Animalium, history of you know, the story of animals. Again, this is the first volume. 1551 was the publication date for this volume, and as you can see by, look, by, by a quick look inside, it's a very text-heavy volume, but it also does contain illustrations of various sorts of animals, you know, some kind of little otter or something of that sort. Well, Gessner set out with this, with this project, he was setting out to create a comprehensive listing, a catalog of every animal that existed or had ever been known to exist. That's a big job. 1551 uh, in, in Switzerland, um, there are certain things that Conrad Gessner could know going in. He knew what a horse looked like. He knew very well what a cow looked like. He knew what rabbits and kitties and dogs looked like. He knew that things like camels and elephants existed as well, but he had never actually seen one. Um, let's face it, a five-mile journey in 1551 took time. So sometimes he had to depend on, and he largely depended on, the written record. What had been written about various animals and what, what had been written sort of dependably about the animal kingdom. And that was what he tried to do. He was going to, to, to account for and try to explain and, and discuss every animal that was known to exist. Well, so what it meant was that it was easy for him to get a picture, for instance, of a lion. Now, lions certainly are not native to Zurich where he was working. But because, because of their long association with royalty and so on, people had a very clear idea of what lions looked like. European princes and kings would bring lions to simply because, because they could. They would have a, have a lion that usually didn't last very long, but people did know what a lion looked like in the mid-16th century. As I said, they also knew what cats and dogs looked like naturally. Here's some kind of a wolf. Not surprising, it's a pretty good representation. Now, speaking, speaking of, the, of the, sort of the, the illustrations in this, in this uh, set, uh, Gessner could draw, but he wasn't necessarily an artist, and he was much more interested in doing the doing the sort of the research and doing the writing involved in this great set. He would hire people to, to, to work from various sources to create wood blocks that he could then print from to represent the various animals in his book. Another interesting thing about this specific volume that we, that we acquired is that at some point in this book's life, someone who owned it had issues with some of its contents. And you can see that there's been an attempt at some real expurgation here. I'll, in a few places in the volume, lines have either been, has either, text has either been lined through with ink, or in some instances, really heavily uh, rubbed at, and so on and so forth. Um, the good news is that in some instances, where some things were simply lined out, the ink that was used has faded. And we can easily see what the text says. And indeed, there were other copies of this book, of course, so we, we, we know what that says. But it's one of the interesting things about this. We knew that that had been done to this before we purchased it, but it was almost an additional spur to us to buy this, buy this volume. People at MIT, indeed scholars in general, are fascinated by sort of the reading history of books. And this is an excellent example of, of, of uh, a book with physical evidence of someone's, at least someone's, interaction with that text. Well. Again, you can see, it's, it, this is a great big book, and it's page after page after page of text, and then the occasional animal illustration will pop out. There's a huge dromedary, and you can see there's even a person there sort of for scale. This book, when it was published, this is, this is a folio. This is a big, very expensive book. But there was a market for it, and indeed there was such a market for it that Gessner and his printer 
seem to feel that there might be a market for the pictures of the animals, the pictures, you know, pretty much just the pictures. Let's go easy on the text. And indeed, two years after this first volume was published, in 1553, a book called Econes Animalium, Pictures of Animals, was, was, was put out by, by Gessner and by the same, the same printer, using the same animal images that appeared in this text-heavy set. But there's, a, big, there's a, a very noticeable difference. First of all, there's not all the text here. The other thing is that this volume is hand-colored and beautifully colored. 